Welcome back you with FBC Sports. The Thai level rugby team has not let the postponement of the Digicel Cup semi-final affect their preparation. The extra week has come as a blessing in disguise. Shelvin Chan reports. Players moved back into camp early today after getting a break following the postponement of the semi-final last Saturday. The extra week has allowed the team to polish on areas which have been the Bow team's level, weakness. The first year is a good thing. Uh, we expect a huge game from them this weekend. We just need to lift our game. Uh, Dalevu is also mindful that the Siri has also been given another week to prepare. Uh, we've, had, we've tried to identify, uh, improve on it, and um, look at also how we can, how we will play the Siri on the day. Only players who have been training and performing this year will be considered for the semi-final. This no-nonsense rule has been laid down to get the best result. The, the group of players that meet with us all this time, um, the people have different sets. We need to actually identify in accordance to the game that we tend to play, that we play the way, that, that, that individual accordingly. With the extra time, both Taleb and the Syria are expected to give a much better performance when they meet this weekend. Rugby fans are now only hoping that the good weather being experienced now continues. Shelvin Chand, FBC Sports. Baulevu High School is looking at setting a new benchmark after making it to the secondary school IDC tournament for the first time since it was established 38 years ago. And what do the Minos think of their chances? Shelvin Chan finds out. The players moved into camp yesterday and have been training hard. This is the first time the school will make an appearance in the IDC. This has not only the players of us, but the Baulevu community as well. Well, this is the first time and the support I have seen. This is the first time I have seen the support of this type in uh, a small school like Baulevu. Uh, so friendly, so generous. The communities, the business people here are so supportive. Despite the setbacks caused by the rain, the team will not let that get them down. The team is serious about the IDC this weekend. I know the hit factor in uh, Ba, so I'm preparing my students, uh, my players for the fitness uh, so that they can last in Ba. The team knows a competition will be tough as the West and North teams will be boasting district and national reps. Coming up to our secondary school IDC competition, we have met uh, good teams, we have played against Saraswati, top schools like Saraswati, Boindale, and uh, with uh, the caliber of our players, I think uh, it will be a good showdown in uh, Ba. The hopes are high and the boys are hell-bent on playing the game of their lives when the secondary school's IDC kicks off in Ba on Thursday. Shalvin Chand, FBC Sports. Suva-based professional flotation development are the new champions of the Nandi Airport Volleyball Tournament. The side scooped the men's division and retained the mixed title for the second year in a row. Chris, Christopher Chan with more details. PFD were crowned the new winners, but it wasn't all plain sailing for the side. They lost in the semi-finals through a protest and had to convince organizers to change the decision. Uh, the semi-finals, they lost the complaint about one player playing for the other team, team two, but he, he didn't play in the semi-final. He was just on the sideline. So they lost the complaint, but lucky we went there and we solved the complaint. We won on the same final, we went into the final. It was a gallant effort by the side. They not only won the men's competition, but also the mixed category. The captain was just saying, give it all, this is the last game. We've sacrificed a lot, we've trained for over one month. Coming to this uh, tournament in Nandi, there are a lot of complaints about our team. But we are very happy that we've won the men and the mixed team. Rentokil won the women's competition oh, and Outrigger the Masters. Organizers have promised another big event next year. Christopher Chan, FBC Sports. Huge opportunities lie ahead for Fiji hockey. They have a chance to qualify for the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio. But as Elena McDonald reports, it's going to be an uphill battle. Fiji hockey plays host to three international tournaments this year. The Masters the series that we had in April, another one to have in September. Plus, he's, uh, we've got the Oceania Pacific given back to us again, and we've got the World Series. Now, the World Series is like a backdoor entry to the, to the Olympics. A big achievement for any sport, but in reality, 
Fiji hockey is struggling. Since its construction in 2003, the National Hockey Centre has remained in good condition. But what does it take to maintain this facility? Looking at an average of uh, 18 to 2,000 a month. And that uh, with our rent, that takes us up already close to 10 grand. Eh? High maintenance costs, no constant income, and no sponsor sees one of the oldest sports in Fiji battling to make ends meet. A lot of voluntary work. Um, we have one club in particular, a men's club, that uh, cuts our lawn. And that used to cost me $100 every three weeks. Fortunately, there are talks of a possible upgrade. With the Sports Council and they're, they're obviously hunting around to get some uh, funding. But uh, I've looked at the carpet on your hockey field and it's, um, it, look, it's still, still playable, but it's getting a bit tired. If the saying, you reap what you sow, is true, then Fiji hockey should see a turnaround for the better. Elena MacDonald, FBC Sports. The London 2012 Olympics have drawn to a close. After two weeks of triumph, pain, tears and smiles, the latest instalment has just gone in the blink of an eye. These were the final scenes at the Olympic Stadium. The world now will wait for another four years before the next Olympics in Brazil. The USA took top honours with 46 gold medals, followed by China with 38 and Great Britain with, 30, with 29. And that was your sports news for tonight.